Well, today I want to share some thoughts with you about senses, and it's entitled Senseless, as you can see on the screen. And I want to start just by reminding you that at least for me, when I read through the Bible, I notice, and maybe you do as well, that some of the Bible greats, some of the stories that we read in the Bible, those people sometimes are uh, more spiritually aware than other Bible greats. Take, for instance, Daniel from the Old Testament of the Bible. Now, Daniel was an Israelite, and he was hauled away from Jerusalem during what was called the Babylonian exile. The Babylonians came in, destroyed Jerusalem, and hauled all the people away, and enslaved them for 70 years in Babylon. And Daniel was one of those people. So obviously and clearly he had sensible or sensibility with the human world, the earthly world, the things that were going on around him. He, he, he was able to see and hear death and destruction and sorrow and pain. He knew those things. But Daniel was also spiritually aware. I mean, this guy walked and talked with angels, interpreted dreams, foresaw the future. This guy had one foot in this earth and another foot in the spiritual realms. He was able to see it all. He was a person with one foot in this secular material world and the other foot in the spiritual world. And while many of those old Bible greats were like Daniel, there were also people in the Bible who seemed to be spiritually senseless. Take, for instance, the strong man Samson, who was a leader in Israel back in the day. And throughout his life, Samson did miraculous things for God. Or should I say that God did miraculous things through Samson? But Samson always gave credit for those miraculous things to his own strength and not to God. He had both feet in this material world. He did not see or sense God's presence in his life until at that last moment when his life came to an end. Samson was blind and deaf to the presence of God in his life. And he was clearly out of touch with spiritual things. He was totally living in a material world. He was a material guy in a material world. Did, you, did anybody catch that? That whole Madonna material girl thing from back in the day? Living in a material world and I'm a material girl? Well, that Samson only changed girl to guy. <coughs> That's who he was. So with that in mind, I want to make this very bold statement to you. Listen, please. As Jesus followers, we need to be both spiritually and materially aware. The Bible says that Christians are in this world, but not of it. So like Daniel, who I just talked about earlier, we are literally exiles here on this earth until the day that Jesus comes to take us back to be with him in our home in heaven. Therefore, like Daniel, not like Samson, like Daniel, we must use our human senses to connect with the world, but we must use our spiritual sensibilities to interpret the world. And by the way, you guys are great examples of that. This week I reached out and invited all of you that are online to participate in an online survey. And 17 of you responded, and here are the results telling us just how spiritual, in general, we are as a church. The first question was, on a scale of 1 to 5, how often do you identify as a Christian during any giving week? And 65% of you said, on a regular basis, you identify as a Christian. Number two, when making decisions, how often do you consider, what would God want me to do? A whopping 93% of you said that you do that regularly. You consider God in your decision-making process. 
Question number three. How often does God speak to you, whether out loud or silently in your head or through the Bible? 70% of you said he does on a regular basis. God speaks to you. Number four. Do you ever feel like you're in the presence of God, whether at church, in a dream, or in a moment of sorrow? And, you know, a lot of us really connect better with God at moments of sorrow. Think of funerals, you know, and times like that. There's great connections made to God. So do you feel like you were in the presence of God during any of those times? Again, 70% of you said, yes, you do regularly. This was a big one. This is one I think about a lot. Question number five. When singing worship songs, do you feel like you're singing to God or you're just singing? 82% of you said that you regularly feel like you're singing to God. And finally, question number six, how do you feel about your relationship with God? And 92% of you, based on the four options that were given, 95% of you said that you want a closer relationship with God. So out of all of that, I'm going to focus today on the fact that even though we're doing pretty well as far as being spiritual beings with one foot in this world and one foot in the spirit world, 95% of us want a closer walk with God. And we're going to talk about spiritual sensibility versus human sensibility and how we can increase our spiritual sensibility and decrease our human or material sensibility so we can better hear from God and we can better be in that spiritual realm because that's who we are. We're in the world, not of it. So, yeah, we're human, and yeah, we have human senses, but we need those senses to interpret the world spiritually. Because that's who we are, spiritual beings. Well, to get us there uh, and to help us increase our spiritual sensibility, uh, I want to share with you first this story that comes to us where Jesus was on a mountaintop and he was teaching a group of people and uh, they had been with him for several days and they were hungry. And uh, Jesus said to his friends and followers, let's feed them. And uh, then they fed them with just seven loaves of bread and a few fishes. Now, think about that. Materially, his disciples are going, how are we going to feed all these people when we only got seven loaves of bread and a couple of small fish? Ha! Ha! We got Jesus hanging out with us, right? He fed 4,000 people with those loaves of bread and fish. But that's not the part of the story I want us to focus on. I want to focus on the part of the story when after they were done, they got into a boat and started heading to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And, and we're going to pick up that story in Mark chapter 8, verse 13. It says, Then he left them, got back into the boat, and crossed to the other side. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread for them to eat, except for one loaf that they had with them in the boat. Jesus said, Be careful. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. And his followers discussed that among themselves and said, Did Jesus say that because we didn't bring enough bread? Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, and listen now, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? <laughs> Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they replied. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many basketful of pieces did you pick up? And they answered, seven. And he said to them, do you still not understand? Let's turn to our notes today. And I uh, got our first fill in the blank as we continue to discover the difference between human sensibility and spiritual sensibility. Sensibility, And I want you to know this morning, based on this story and many other things in the Bible, 
that human senses can make us spiritually senseless. Human senses can make us spiritually senseless. They keep us from discerning the things of God. Human senses keep us from discerning the things of God. From the moment we're born, our senses go to work to interpret all of the input. But we're trained and we're made to interpret those things from a human perspective. But once we become Jesus followers, once we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, we are no longer citizens of this world. We're members of the kingdom of God. And if, as Jesus followers, we keep both feet in the world, then these are the results. Just a little bit later in Mark chapter 8, Jesus told his followers that he was going to die on a cross. And Peter, who was Jesus' BFF, said that he would never let that happen to Jesus. And Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples, and then he reprimanded Peter. And he said, get away from me, Satan. Now listen, this is so important. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. So, as we take in information, we either filter it through our human senses or our godly senses. And how we respond to that input most clearly corresponds with how we interpret it. If someone goes to take a swing at me, my human eyes are going to make me go like this. Jesus said, if someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to them your left cheek and let him hit you on that one as well. Don't resist people. If someone comes up and he steals my coat, I would run after him and tackle him and get my coat back. But Jesus said, give him your shirt as well. When we interpret our world and filter it through humanity, the results are going to be human. But we're spiritual. We are in this world, but not of it. So it's so important that we understand that our human senses can get in the way of spirituality. They can make us spiritually senseless, senseless and keep us from discerning the things of God. Which leads us to number two. Therefore, as Jesus followers, we need to develop a spiritual sensibility. We've got to to have our spiritual senses active and working. The first century Christian missionary and Jesus follower Paul said it this way. He was speaking to the church or the group of Christians that lived in the city of Colossae, and he said this, Since you are now living a new life with Christ Jesus, Set your sights on the realities of heaven where Jesus sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Because when you became a follower of Jesus, you died to this life. Now your real life is with Christ. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Do this by putting on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator, and should become like him. You have died to earthly things. Now put on your new nature and live like a child of heaven. We, Jesus followers, need to develop spiritual sensibility. Number three to gain spiritual sensibility, we must, must, this is a must, we must identify as citizens of heaven. You know, that's the big talk out there in our society these days. 
who do you identify as? We must identify first and foremost, before mom, before business owner, before elderly, before very handsome and good looking, before however we identify, we need to identify as citizens of heaven. Again, Paul, the Jesus follower, first century Christian missionary, wrote this to the Ephesians church. He said, you are no longer foreigners and strangers in this world, but are fellow citizens with God's people, members of God's household. But if you're still identifying as Greg, the son of Barb and Gerald, then more than likely, that's going to be the life that you live, and more than likely, that's going to weigh, be the way that you interpret stimuli that comes in through your senses. But we are to live, and that's your next fill in the blank, we're not only supposed to identify as citizens of heaven, we're supposed to live as citizens of heaven. You know, I was a United States Marine, and one of the things that I hear all the time is, oh, well, when you were in boot camp, they brainwashed you. And in a way, that's true. Don was in the Marine Corps in the 50s, went through boot camp, so he would know what I'm talking about. When you go to boot camp, they totally separate you from the fact that you're a Greg Nitschman, son of Barb and Gerald, and they reacquaint you with the idea that you are a United States Marine. And by the time three months worth of boot camp is over, when you leave that place, you identify as a United States Marine. Why? That's what you need to be to function as a United States Marine. You need that change of mind and change of heart. But I have to admit that after boot camp, I went home for 10 days. We called it leave. It was 10 days of vacation before I went back out to Camp Pendleton and had to um, sign in with the 1st Marine Infantry Division. And during those 10 days, it became very aware to me that I wanted to eventually ask Jean, who is my girlfriend, to marry me. And when I left after those 10 days, I was no longer Greg the Marine. I was Greg the guy who wanted to marry Jean. Until I got back out to the 1st Marine Division and got into my unit, and slowly but surely they got me back on path of being Greg the Marine, who still remembered from time to time that he wanted to marry Jean. And I spent a couple of years, even after we got married, out there in the Marine Corps Infantry, and then I got stationed at a Marine Reserve Center in Evansville, Indiana, so far away from the real Marine Corps that you just can't even imagine it. And during that year and a half, I stopped identifying as a United States Marine and started identifying as Greg, the father of Melissa, the husband of Gene, the, the guy who really likes living in a town and not on a military base and all the things that were great there. But when I got back out to the infantry again after a year and a half, man, I, we went for our first run. And, you know, I, I would run three miles in 16 minutes. We went for our first run, I fell out. To fall out in the Marine Corps means you can't keep the pace, and so you go out to the side and you fall out to the back and you do your best to keep up. I never fell out. We went on our first 25-mile force march, I fell out. I couldn't keep up. Mentally, it took me a while to recondition. I made a couple of mistakes at work. And then, all of a sudden, before we were getting ready to deploy overseas, my first sergeant came to me and said, Greg, you're going to take over a third platoon. And it was a surprise to me, because I thought that they all thought that I was totally washed up and no good. And I mentioned that to my first sergeant. He said, you just came back from I&I &I duty, which was in Evansville, Indiana. We know that you're not quite there yet. You'll get your head on right eventually. And I did. And I took third platoon, which was the worst platoon in the entire battalion, and they became the, the best platoon in the battalion. But to be able to do that, I needed to identify as a Marine and live as a Marine. And in fact, now that I'm not a Marine and haven't been one for many years, all my fellow Marines tell me, yes, you are, because once you're a Marine, you're always a Marine. Well, if that sounds weird to you, 
you have to embrace that concept somehow. Because you're no longer in, you're, you're in this world, but you're no longer of it. And we need to identify as citizens of heaven and live as citizens of heaven. I once had a Marine who went home on the weekend and he smoked marijuana, which is not right for Marines to do. And when he got back, we had a drug test and he proved positive. And all through his trial, it wasn't a big trial, it's not like they took him out and shot him, but during his trial, we called it Article 15, he kept saying, but I was on my own time. And we're always reminded as Marines, no, you're a Marine 24-7, 365. You're always on duty. You get paid a salary, and that salary covers 24 hours a day, seven days. I once had a friend who went out on the weekend, we had been out in the field, and he got poison oak, then he went out and fell asleep on the beach in California and got sunburnt, and they charged him with destruction of government property. And he had to pay one half of a month's salary and spend 15 days at hard labor for it. And he kept saying, but I was out on my own time. And again, many people react to that and say, they brainwash you. We're in this world, but we're not of it. We must identify as citizens of heaven and live as citizens of heaven. Again, Paul said this, don't you realize that your bodies are actually one with Jesus now? And the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with Jesus. Therefore, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself. Pause. I'm going to say that again. You do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price. The sacrifice of his son Jesus on a cross. So you must honor God with your body. And that comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul also said in Romans chapter 12, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship God. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Peter, Jesus' BFF, said this, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives here on earth among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he comes. Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as to the one in the authority or to the governors as sent to him for punishment of evildoers, but in all things give praise to those who do right. We are in this world, but we are not of it. And Jesus said this, If anyone wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Guys, we must identify as citizens of heaven and we must live as citizens of heaven. And based on survey results, we're not doing bad, but based on survey results, we all want to do better, or at least 93% of us say we want to do better in our relationship with God. And if we're going to know more about God, we need to know more about him from a spiritual sense. 
Because God is spiritual. So we need to develop our spiritual sensibility. So here's the big idea for the day. Our eyes and ears are conduits, that's a channel, that allow outside information to enter our bodies. And when we filter this incoming information with our human senses only, our hearts are hardened to the things of God. We're spiritually senseless. Remember the followers of Jesus in the boat. Oh, Jesus wants some bread. <laughs> he wasn't talking about that. Therefore, Jesus' followers must develop their spiritual sensibility by identifying as spiritual and by living as spiritual beings. And I've got a couple of next steps to share with you today that may help you along that way. Number one, I want to invite you to reread today's Bible verses this week. Those verses are listed at the bottom of your notes for the message, both in your program here, uh, on your phone, under the Facebook, uh, or under the uh, Bible app, uh, and then also um, you'll find those online as well. So reread today's Bible verses this week. Number two, pray to be spiritually sensible. To me, almost everything starts with prayer. Turn to God and say, God, I need some help here. I really do view my world almost entirely from a human perspective. And or even if I am doing a good job with it, I want to do more. So pray to be more spiritually sensible. Number three, start practicing basic spirituality. If, if you have a place to write these down in your notes, I want, to write, I want you to write four words. They're simple. Write the word prayer, write the word Bible, write the word church, and write the word deeds. Prayer, Bible, church, deeds. That's basic spirituality, the four things that we all should be practicing as citizens of heaven on a consistent and regular basis basis. We should be praying throughout the day. We should be in our Bible at least once a day. We should come to church every week, and we should be out there doing good deeds, letting our light shine among people so that they can see our good works and give God glory. So number one, reread today's Bible verses. Number two, pray to be spiritually sensible. Number three, start practicing basic spirituality. I don't care if you have to put a chart up on your refrigerator and you look at it as a weekly thing and yeah, I did that this week and yeah, I did that this week. Anything to help you do this because it helps you identify as a Christian. You spend too much time out there in the world, just like when I went home on vacation as a Marine, you begin to lose it. If you're only coming to church once every three, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, you're going to lose it. Guaranteed, that's how we people work. So stay connected to those four basic spirituality acts. And then finally, number four, identify as, as Kingdom of God members. Look, we're all big on social media. Be brave. Go on there and over in your little thing about you on the left-hand side of your Facebook page. Somewhere put in there, and I'm not real keen on all this, but somehow put over there that you're a Christian. If, if you have uh, an Instagram page, up at top they have that little line underneath to identify who you are. You get that chance to say a little bit about it. Make sure you include that you're a Jesus follower. Be bold. Go out there and identify as a Christian and just see how it works for you. It should be pretty good. Of course, if it's not good, then you celebrate God because Jesus said, you know, we should be happy when we're persecuted and blessed. So, reread today's Bible verses, pray to be spiritually sensible, start practicing regularly those basic spiritual acts, and then finally, number four, go out there and publicly identify as a follower of Jesus, as a member of the kingdom of heaven. And if you do those four things, I am positive that you will increase your spiritual sensibility and 93% of you said that that's what you wanted to do. Well, that's a good way to get started.